Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome back to more Fatal Frame. Well, now that we are back in the present day, we are in control of the real protagonist of the game, Miku. Now, as opposed to her brother, Mafuya, she actually has no idea about the history of the mansion, and she's going to be getting a bit of a crash course in the history and the sordid past of what happened at the mansion and just exactly what happened to Mafuya. And as the doors are now locked by a powerful force, she has no other recourse of action than to press forward. Now we will be retreading pretty much everything that we saw in the introduction, though there will be a few new things here and there, such as this shiny object over here in the corner. This is actually going to be our first healing item of the game. The herbal medicine actually heals Miku for about a third of her health, which may sound like quite a bit in comparison to other games, but as we will be seeing, she will be needing as many of these healing items as possible. Also, it is a good idea to check around every corner. You never know what you just might miss. Oh, and this is our first opportunity to capture, capture a ghost, though we don't have a camera as of right now. This is actually the only circumstance where we actually need a new game plus to capture a ghost. But it seems that disembodied head did leave behind an item. This might elucidate a little bit of what happened. But in all reality, this is probably the least helpful note that we'll be finding in the game. And we will be finding quite a few files in the game, so if I do go through to a bit too fast for you, please feel free to pause the video at your own leisure and read those. But yeah, as opposed to Mafuya, Miku actually has no camera to protect herself, so well, hopefully we can rectify that as soon as possible as... Well, he did mention ropes and you see our surroundings. So we now have the camera obscura back, and we also get a small vision of what might have happened to Mafuya, along with a pretty lengthy note from Mafuya himself. It does give a little bit of a backstory about the Himuro Mansion and the Shinto ritual that had gone on here beforehand, but well, for some reason was lost to time. Also, after reading that note, you want to quickly turn around. As we do get another view of that gentleman that we saw the head of before. Now you can already see that Miku's attention is being drawn over off camera, but 
Well, it never hurts to investigate. Sometimes there are hidden items in chests and drawers. In this case, we do find a lion's mask, along with yet another container of herbal medicine. So it looks like our attention is being drawn here, but it doesn't... Oh! Hmm. The Shadow of Mafuya. For some reason that doesn't seem like a very good omen. But before we head upstairs, there is an item for us to pick up in this little library here. Along with a few scattered books for old rituals, but more importantly, we do find our first container of film. Possibly the worst film in the game, but any additional ammo for our camera is always appreciated. So if we remember from the introduction, this is where we found that notebook on the ground, along with a door I didn't investigate before. And for good reason, as... Well, uh, there would have been no way to get through the door in the intro. I guess we're just going to have to keep that particular door in mind as we uh, press forward through the mansion. Also, as uh, in the intro, you may have noticed there's this little balcony over here. There is a good reason I didn't go over here, mostly due to the fact there well, would have been absolutely no reason to. But now we do have an item to pick up. And if we go to the edge of the stairs... Now it is a good idea to pay attention to where these ghosts are heading. Uh, for the most part, they're actually going to be very indicative as to the direction we are going to need to be taking. In the case of that man, who we still don't know the identity of, he was heading back downstairs, so I guess we should head that way. You probably could have saw it there, but it seems like there's something waiting for us behind that screen. So we now get shown that the camera has another very important use and that, well, occasionally it will show us things that would normally be concealed to the naked eye. You also notice that the viewfinder is now lit up and that there is a slight distortion on the screen. So if we take a quick snapshot, it's actually revealed that well, there seems to be a door behind the screen. Hmm, 
I get a pretty strong feeling that the key he's referring to is the one to that door on the second floor. Now before we head in that door, I do want to take a quick jaunt down this particular hallway. Not only shows some very wonderful perspective work, but also to pick up another item. And this is yet another herbal medicine. And it may seem like they're just throwing these at us left and right, but I cannot overemphasize the combat in this game can be very dangerous. On the dresser here, we do find another file to read. This one goes into a grisly scene that happened some time ago in the nearby mountains. Seems that the local police have found a horribly dismembered body, and it's apparently not the first one they've come across in the nearby mountains. Something about a woman in a kimono? Also, I'm hearing something else odd in the background, but all well, shiny objects do come first. This is actually the next upgraded version of film, which we're going to be holding on to uh, as we will be uh, using it later. But it almost seems like it's coming from in here. We get a glimpse into the last tortured moments of that poor man we've been following all around, along with his tape recorder still ghostly playing behind him. Now this tape recorder is actually going to be somewhat useful in revealing some of the story. Might as well go ahead and listen to that tape we found. September 9th, 5.40 p.m. The mansion was nowhere to be seen on the map, so we finally had to ask the locals how to find it. They told us that Himuro Mansion had been empty for several decades now. The same ones who told us where it was also warned us not to come here, which was quite disconcerting. I guess by this tape we're supposed to start assuming that maybe this gentleman was with the Takamine group. I think you could kind of see him in one of uh, the flashbacks in the introduction level.
But yet again, we did see a woman in a kimono. And, well, wouldn't you know it, we find ourselves now in a room full of them. Also, looks like that man might be looking for the rest of his party. Still not exactly sure what he is leading us towards. Also, it looks like on this dresser here, there is a small mirror stand that's missing a mirror, and it has a locked drawer. Hmm. Have to keep that in mind for later. Also see by our viewfinder that there is a sneaky ghost hiding behind in the kimonos here. Outside of the kimonos, we can actually see an item flashing there next to the window. So let's go ahead and investigate. So it seems that being a mere phantom, he's gone to full-on angry specter. But as long as you keep a cool head and remember your first introductory fight, well, he's not going to be too much of a difficulty. And by defeating him, we actually unlock a new mysterious power for the camera with the broken seal. We can now actually upgrade the camera with uh, the points that we've been accruing by defeating Ghost and catching those one-time ghosts we see pop up. We also see a mention of auxiliary functions, but I'll be going into that a little bit later on in the video. For right now, let's see what he was guarding over here by the window. Oh, it's just another tape. Let's go ahead and give that a listen. September 9th, 9.40 p.m. It seemed dangerous to walk through the mountain at night, so we decided to spend the night here and continue our work. I've been through several rooms already. Unlike the exterior, the interior is still in quite good shape. A little earlier, I thought I saw a white, shadowy figure of a woman in the hallway near the entrance. I'll keep track of such sightings and publish them in a later account. He just sounds absolutely enthralled. But since we are already in the menu here, we might as well go ahead and look at the camera upgrade functions. Now the camera option here in the menu shows us all the films we have available along with some of the basic functions of the camera and the bonus and special functions. For right now it is a good idea to go ahead and upgrade the basic functions of the camera. Now range will increase the area we can capture a ghost, speed is how quickly we charge up our mystical power, and max value is our maximum mystical power we can have. So we might as well go ahead and get the level 1 ranking for all three of these. If you are playing along with me, I can honestly say that upgrading these first is probably what you want to do first of all. 
But with our camera nicely upgraded, it's now a question of... Well, where to go to next? We've reached somewhat of a dead end. Okay, so we really have no other choice than to... I don't know, maybe backtrack to the start of the mansion. Well, seems that something has caught our camera's eye. And it's coming from the mirror stand. And we definitely remember where that was. We found a herbal medicine there earlier. So it's backtracking to the lion's mask. Now, there will be quite a bit of backtracking through the game, and while normally this would be kind of a negative feature on most games, I will say some things do change as you do backtrack. And of course you didn't think we were totally done with that particular ghost yet, did you? No. Yeah, most of the ghost encounters that we will be running into, at least in an enemy sense, are pretty much scripted, but there will be some random attacking ghosts later on. Usually for the most part, though, we will be running into one central boss ghost for most of these areas. We do find a red hand mirror in the lion's head, along with a little document that wasn't here before. And this blue notebook actually gives us our first interesting piece of backstory. It's actually from the novelist Takamine, who Mamofuya was looking for before. But it goes over a little bit of what happened here at Himuro Mansion in the past and the dark Shinto rituals that might have gone in on here. Along with the notebook, we also find a newspaper clipping. And this goes over a bit in regards to a earthquake that happened to shatter five sacred mirrors. Now, while this may not seem important right now, this actually will become very important later on in the game. Now, for the most part, ghost locations will make some bit of sense in regards to the ghosts themselves. Other times, they'll just kind of pop up in somewhat random places, trying to catch you by surprise. And really, they do a pretty good job of catching you by surprise sometimes. So it's always recommended that you pretty much stay on your toes constantly.
It's that person I just saw. <gasps> the ropes. So we actually get a picture of that man that has been attacking us and walking around. Along with what I assume to be the key to the second floor. But it's time for our actual final fight with the editor. And this one is pretty much going to be the real first test of combat for those playing the game. Yeah, the editor has become a lot more mobile. He's actually got a brand new attack where he will charge directly at us. And this will probably be the first circumstance where you're going to be pretty much confused as to which direction the ghost is going to be coming from. Yeah, as the ghosts have the ability to phase through walls, it will be very, very important to have a strong situational awareness to really get a feeling as to which direction they're going to be coming from. In the end, with a calm head, making sure to wait for a full mystical power bar and the shudder moment, well, pretty much most ghosts in the game are not that much of a hassle. With the editor defeated, he leaves behind a shiny object. This is our first spirit stone, and as you can tell by the description, this allows us to use the auxiliary functions on the camera. Now, what are auxiliary functions, you might be asking? Well, they are very special operations we can do with the camera, but I'll probably be unlocking those after we upgrade the basic functions to their maximum. Needless to say, they have kind of varying usage. And, well, every time we use an auxiliary function, it will take away one spirit stone. So, well, they have a very, very limited ammo. But with our brand new key, I think it's time to head up to the second floor. Seems that something is definitely wanting to draw our attention up to the second floor. But I think this is a good time to stop the video for right now. Hopefully you'll join me next time as we head through the door and continue unlocking the mysteries of Fatal Frame.